Okay, uh, I realize we only have three minutes, so I'm going to go very fast. The uh, city conscious work environment will be defined as we. Um, uh, we heard some opening remarks that saying that was, no one was saying that they wouldn't raise the safety concerns. Well, if people are afraid to raise safety concerns, you can't use the absence of someone saying that they won't raise the safety concerns. It's a double negative there. People aren't raising safety concerns or saying that I won't raise one because they're afraid to do that. Um, group interviews. We initially had some group interviews that were conducted by the NRC. I conveyed the information to Region 4 that group interviews are not totally accurate because in that interview panel, those the people present in that session, uh, John might be friends with KJ, so therefore I'm afraid to tell what I want to say for fear that it will get back to management. So those are not very effective. Uh, we don't have any truth in our meetings at San Antonio, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't introduce myself. I'm James Chambers. I'm a licensed nuclear reactor operator at San Onofre. I'm currently working in the Nuclear Regulatory Affairs uh, Department in uh, the licensing. Um, we have no truth at our meetings at the point. And after I leave a meeting and I, I voice my concerns, there are people that are patting me on the back and they're saying, thanks for telling the truth in there. I'm sorry I couldn't back you up. And that is the truth. And I've already conveyed that to management. Uh, there's a significant problem with people being able to tell the truth at the plant. Uh, we heard that everyone knows the definition of SQUI, or safety conscious work environment. That's only because they need to know the definition to defend themselves. Everybody wants to use that definition to scrub San Onofre free of the problems that are causing the safety conscious work environment. People want to get rid of the people that are causing the retaliation against the workers who are raising concerns. Um, we have brand new people that are raising concerns six months, nine month employees, not just the 20, 25 year employees, but brand new people that feel they're being retaliated against. Um, we heard that the company's uh, concerned and serious about resolving the SQUI issues. I filed an allegation based upon SQUI, and the company chose to use a representative, the previous uh, station manager, Al Hochebar, uh, to represent the company, and I raised a concern during the, the process, and is the right person going to be representing the company? Is there going to be a, the end result? Is it going to be positive? And it turns out that Al Hochevar, he's gone. So what happened to the concerns that I raised during my mediation? And I, I asked the question, if we have someone who's labeled as a contingent worker or a contractor, why would they be representing Songs or Southern California Edison and then only leave a few weeks later after the mediation? I don't think it was the correct person to represent. Um, you came up with a plan. Songs has always had a plan, but we've never really initiated or completed those plans. San Jose is an INPO 4, we are an INPO 3 twice in a row, we're an INPO Policy Note 14 plan, we're an NRC Column 2 plan, we have the longest substantive cross-cutting issues in human performance in the history of nuclear power in the United States, forced the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to change their procedures. We've always had a plan. When are we actually going to do something to implement those plans. Um, what's that? Sorry. Um, there are two tiers of discipline at the plant. One for the individual worker, which is uh, disciplinary actions or termination, and then another for management, which is nothing. Uh, I observed a safety violation in uh, the owner controlled area. I spoke to the people. They verbally stated they knew they were violating the procedures, a director and a manager. I wrote a notification, I filed an allegation, the, re the end result was they didn't do anything wrong. So that ties into the safety conscious work environment because if my best truth, if John's best truth right here, it, it ends up in, in nothing happening, then why are people going to continue to raise concerns? Why, what, what motivation do I have to continue to raise a concern when my best truth is worth nothing? Um, there's no trust and no management uh, support and engagement. I thought that was one of your column one things. You have significant work in the area of trust and management support and engagement. There's also no trust in the employee concerns program. The end result is nothing happens, and everybody knows that. Um, the increase in allegations is only uh, proof positive that nobody trusts the corrective action process, nobody speaks for the supervisor, nobody speaks to the manager, and um, their, their last resort is to file an allegation. I met with Doug Bowder. I had a personal invitation to meet with him about a notification that I wrote concerning uh, the human performance program. Um, I felt as, as a part of that team, 
I felt that um, we couldn't achieve our goals with our current process. And this is a quote, uh, Doug said, it took a lot of guts for you to say what you had to say. That's a good quote. But it's indicative that it took a lot of guts to tell the truth. Why do I have to have a lot of guts to tell the truth at San Onofre? It's because everybody's afraid to tell the truth. That's a proof positive that there's a serious trust uh, issue at the plant. Um, where did the gentleman say that he got out last night at 7.30 and spoke with some workers? That's great. But the crux is, the, the critical point, the crucial point is the relationship between the supervisor and the worker, the management and the worker. And the problem that we have is the management at San Onofre does not see the value in a human heart. They don't see the value in the contributions of an individual worker. And that's why we don't have any trust, and that's why we are where we are today. Um, okay. Um, I made a commitment uh, as a licensed operator to protect uh, the health and safety of the public. But I'm telling you that if there's no trust in an organization, we cannot protect the health and safety of the public if people are afraid to raise safety concerns. That is a significant task that Joe has ahead of him. And uh, I wish you the best of luck, Joe, in, in your endeavors. Every time I come to one of these meetings, I get terrified uh, because of the, the, the people that are so brave and Rick and Peter, I guess the other guy's name was. You know, who has the, the nerve, the guts to come up in front of all of you and, and make a statement like that? It, it terrifies me as a member of the public that somebody has to be that brave because things are going so badly. We haven't seen any progress in four years. We're still not seeing any progress. And in fact, things are getting worse. And Joe, they brought you in because it looks to some people like you did a good job. They gave you awards from the NEI. But we have other records of South Texas Project, which doesn't show that it's been such a well-run plan. You've got leaks everywhere. You have shutdowns that go on for a long time. You were brought in because they were having problems. But they still have problems. And now there's lawsuits over the other two reactors, the AP-1000s, the Barber are going to work anyway. Now let's talk about those tsunamis. We used to have a, uh, 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 your, your guy, what, what do they call him, a public affairs guy. He told me that uh, the dry cats can survive 50 feet uh, uh, underwater. Within a few months of hearing that, we had a, a, the tsunami in, in uh, Banda Aceh. Waves were on film of over 60 feet. Now there's no question there can be waves much bigger than that because the underwater uh, formation, rock formations here could, could slip and create a, a, a tidal wave of hundreds of feet. Now, you, Joe, you said that you don't have a, a problem with the, the nuclear waste at South Texas Project because you can keep it all on site for as long as you want. Now, we had to listen to Ray Golden tell us for 10 years, 15 years, that you got the mountain is going to be the solution to the problem. The Yucca Mountain is not working. Uh, Obama's got a committee to try to come up with something else. But the committee to, to, that came up with Yucca Mountain was told that if they could think of anything better, they were allowed to come up with it. But they couldn't come up with anything better. Now, Joe, you don't have anything better because what you said was you were just going to keep it all on site. And they, you had 1,200 acres or 12,000 acres at, at uh, SDP. You've got, what, about 450 here? This is no place to keep. I mean, look at where you've got the steam generator there. It is literally a stone's throw from the highway. Now, let's hope I don't have a stone on the way home when I drive by, because it's that close. Who, who plans these things? Are you guys really trying to do a good job, or are you just trying to snow the public? Because we know the dry casks aren't safe. We know they're not safe from earthquakes. They're not safe from tsunamis. They're not safe from terrorists. I got a letter from a guy saying that they can survive a, a bunker buster bomb. That's not true. That's just not true. I don't need to get letters like that. Was it one of your employees that sent it or some other nuclear power plant that didn't like something I wrote? I get tired of all these plots. And as for you, NRC, what are you guys still doing here? I mean, it's been years and things are getting worse. Can't we get a new team? Someone that knows what they're doing? Or, or don't they exist at the NRC? I guess that's about it for me. I, I'm up to you. Thanks very much. Thank you.